point, I just want to welcome everybody um, to our series seven of our course development webinar. As I mentioned, we're going to be talking about Learning Mate and our course developments. So let me. All right, I will figure it out, but just I'll go over the agenda first. So just wanted to give everybody a recap of our, our series in the past. So I know many of you have come to um, all seven of our series. Uh, you know, we've talked about creating course learning outcomes, summative assignments, formative assignments. Um, and now we're going to be talking about kind of putting it all together and working with our new vendor learning mate. So Trisha is going to give us an introduction to Learning Mate, their goals and their philosophy as they help us with our course development. Um, then we have two very exciting guest speakers, Dr. Jesse Upshaw and Dr. Lane Andrew, who have been part of our pilot courses and have developed some amazing courses with Learning Mate. Um, and then we're going to discuss facilitation tips as well as kind of sharing our vision and end with a Q&A. So oh, yeah, as a recap um, of our past series, um, we've kind of started putting everything together. So discussing how to create measurable course learning outcomes, um, followed by backward design and kind of designing with the end in mind. Um, we then discuss our summative assignment, which is that final assignment, and then creating formative assignments and providing feedback to our students. So I will let Trisha go in and introduce Learning Mate and kind of discuss the goals that they'll be helping us with. Thanks, Nikki. Before I do that, though, Nikki, I don't know if you saw some of the comments in the chat with some tips on how to adjust. I can't see the chat, but how? Oh. Jesse, do you mind unmuting and helping Nikki? Sure. Um, actually, Julie, the fastest way Julie Atkins recommended, uh, if you go to the display settings and um, select switch view, or switch screen up at the top where um, where you've got a little drop down display settings of your PowerPoint. I see that. There, there we go. go. Thanks, Julie. Thank you, Julie. Julie gets the prize. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. Hi, everyone. My name is Trisha Lauer, and I'm the Vice President of Assessment and Curricular Affairs. And it's a pleasure to be spending the next 45 minutes or so with you. We have um, some great things planned. Um, related to, no, Nikki, you're back to where you were. There we go. Um, now we're set, thank you. Um, it's a privilege to share a little bit more about you where I think today for lack of a better phrase, it's show and tell. And um, I'm very excited to be joined by this great team, particularly Jesse and Lane, as they have some exciting things to share with you. For a little bit of context of why we're here today, um, when Amy, Nikki, Natalie, Diana, Jen Zauer, and Kate Johnson and I were talking about this final course uh, development workshop series for the year, we had talked about having this be a celebration. And so I really hope that's what today proves to be when you see some of the artifacts in front of you and some of the plans for our courses. On um, Back in August, we began on a journey um, to really think a little bit differently about our course development and course design as part of um, our new partnership with um, a vendor called Learning Mate to develop our courses. And as part of that, we participated in three weeks of orientation, onboarding, and workshops with um, Learning Mates staff, as well as UAGC faculty, staff, and members even from other departments, um, really talking about our processes, our needs, um, our vision for the future related to what we offer our students in our courses. And I was so um, impressed, um, not surprisingly impressed, but I was so impressed with the, um, the information that our faculty and staff shared with Learning Mate about what we really want to ensure is in all of our courses and the opportunities that our students and faculty who are teaching those courses have as part of the learning environment. 
So on this slide, I have shared with you three of the key goals that came out of those conversations. And these are the goals that LearningMate articulated back to us that they heard. The first was to create a course design process that's more efficient and allows for more creativity. So we have um, in the pilot, we reduced the length of the development phase to 12 weeks from 17 weeks. Um, that does align with what most other institutions um, use as their timeline. We have since decided to expand that from 12 weeks to 14 weeks to accommodate um, planning as well as quality assurance and accessibility checks at the end. We also felt that it was very important to redefine the role of the instructional designers within that development process. And I think we've seen that really come to fruition throughout the pilot. We also really are encouraging faculty to think about program level um, course development. Um, often we currently think of courses as very siloed. Um, I'll use Jessie for an example. She currently revised ESE 634. She may not in the past have been able to revise another ESC course for some time. Now what we're doing is saying, Jesse, create what you want every course in your program to look like, and we will replicate it throughout. So that's another very exciting um, enhancement. Second, we want to spark student engagement through learning science um, best practices to make courses more engaging. Um, looking at scenario-based interactives, talking head and animated videos, um, much more video and interactive media, creating even more authentic assessments um, to help students think about real world deliverables and how they can utilize that information um, in their careers, workforces um, to improve themselves personally and professionally. Also to design opportunities for student peer interaction to help um, students connect to each other in meaningful ways through peer feedback activities and synchronous sessions, which we've um, endearingly termed live learning. Um, and then also, and I think this was one that I, I really loved, was that we want to spark faculty joy and create courses that are enjoyable for all of you to facilitate and help students master the learning outcomes. So as part of those three main goals, four foci came out. I already mentioned um, sparking student engagement. Developing critical thinking really came out of conversations, maybe more implicitly. I don't think any, any faculty said like, we really, you know, one of our main goals is to develop critical thinking, but we talked a lot about how that is maybe a core foundational skill that will help students regardless of the subject matter. It also came out of the curriculum and assessment steering committee of our faculty council as a primary focus of, of interest um, for all students um, and faculty across all programs and courses. Creating a community of learners, thinking about not only student um, to content interaction, um, student to faculty interaction, but also student to student interaction. So really thinking of those three ways that we can get students involved in a community of learners. And then finally, importantly, demonstrating real world relevance to all of the activities that they do in the course. Next slide. This is really little, and if anybody wants to see it larger, just send me an email, um, and I'm happy to send this to you. My email is trisha.lauer at uagc.edu. This shows um, at the top the four foci, and then on the, on the rows are some different activities that we are embedding um, very deliberately in our courses, and you'll have an opportunity to see those in both Jesse and Lane's courses shortly, um, including we uh, weekly cognitive primers. Rather than saying like, this week you're going to learn about the quadratic equation and how you can um, you know, solve, 
giving context or creating some sort of um, interesting media that the students engage with rather than um, spitting out a bunch of words on text. Um, clearer pre presentation or cleaner. Um, a lot of our courses are very text heavy and assignments are text heavy. And so really creatively thinking about ways that we can deliver the same message, um, but without expecting students to read page after page and scroll and scroll and scroll to get to the content. Um, learning slingshots are more of a long-term um, um, initiative, but those are essentially creating media that students interact with. Um, something that we learned is that often students don't engage with not only the content we put in our courses, but also the media assets. So how can we really think deliberately and intentionally about creating um, interactives that students must in, interact with in order to complete their work and master their learning outcomes. Um, peer review, we've talked a lot about already, as well as authentic assessments. Live learning, as you know, is not currently in every course, but is on its way where it's appropriate and will be meaningful for students. And then also thinking about how we can ensure that we're carefully and deliberately integrating workforce skills into our courses. So more to come on that, but did want to share with you um, how some of what you're going to see from Jesse and Lane's new courses fit into the bigger picture of our goals with our course developments. Thanks everyone. And finally, but very importantly, these are the 15 courses that have been part of the pilot, which commenced at the end of August and beginning of September and are just in the final stages of development right now. Lane's course already copied and Jesse's is set to copy this weekend as well as many others, but wanted all of you to have a peek at the courses which um, um, were part of the pilot Special thanks to all of the faculty, department chairs, and staff that have been part of this um, learning process. There have been some bumps and bruises along the way, but I think we're all on the getting to the other side of it. And are, I'm really pleased with, um, with what, what these courses look like and what is offered now for our students. Thank you so much, Trisha. Um, and now we wanted to bring in our guest uh, guest speakers, Jesse Upshaw and Lane Andrew. Jesse, would you love to describe your course? Sure. And can you uh, give me permissions to share so um, Lane and I can walk through just a little bit when we get to that stage? I am working on that. Oh, right thank you, now. Diana. Thank you, Diana. Um, so just to give you a little context, my course is a graduate level course. So it is a six week course that may look a little different for those of you that, that do undergrad or doctoral level courses, but just to give you that context um, and it fits into our course sequence. Um, we had a great opportunity to work with a wonderful team um, at Learning Mate, and it was really um, a true collaborative process. It was, it was a fantastic experience. I had the honor of Jen Zauer, the uh, guru of the Trish and Jen's uh, dish <laughs> um, uh, shadowing the development as well. So um, I had a lot of, um, of great insights, some great support from the assessment team as well. Caitlin is our assessment representative and she was there to work. So really this was, this was a true collaborative process from all angles, learning mate side, UAGC side, the learning technology side here at UAGC. And, and I promised I would give the caveat that when I show you the course right now, it hasn't copied yet, but it, it, it's, there's still a few things that are going through review, but it looks beautiful. <laughs> I'm very excited to show it off. Um, we really focused on those four foci, um, sparking engagement, critical thinking, the community of learners, and the workplace and real world relevance um, throughout our program, but definitely had the opportunity to bring it to life in new ways with this particular course development. And so now I'm going to go ahead and show you the magic of our Shell, can everybody see? <laughs> okay, so this is the uh, is the behind the scenes version of of the course as it stands, and um, we you can see already right off the bat we have a banner which was part of that sparking engagement, bringing in banners and media um, to our course where it's it's very evident as soon as students log in they can see which course they're in. Um, we have the block design with the six week course so that the course information 
information's right up there at the top for the students. Um, one of the ways we brought in media into our course, oh, you know what, let me make sure I shared um, my sound because that's going to be really important here in just a minute. <laughs> Sorry about that. So you can see the banners carry through to every week and you can just see how that goes with our overview. Um, but our media team, our, our instructional, uh, instructional designer actually um, helped write some of the media components while we collaborated with course content and, um, and the script. So I want you to meet Mr. Franklin. Let's reconnect with Mr. Franklin, who is a general educator. You've met him in previous courses. He is not looking forward to his upcoming meeting with a special education team and the principal of his school. They are supposed to discuss trusting partnerships and special education programming. First, for the sake of time, I'm not going to show the whole thing, but I do want to slide you to the end. Opportunities that you can use to practice them. Building trusted family professional partnerships is the key to successfully working as a team to meet students' needs. So it sets the stage for the week. It's, it's kind of that primer that uh, Trisha was talking about, bringing us in and, and engaging students. Mr. Franklin's actually a character that's been part of our course sequence throughout the program. And our uh, Learning Meet team brought him to life and gave him, gave him um, a true uh, experience in, in this particular uh, video. Another piece that we brought in for sparking engagement and for critical thinking for students. Let me actually get past the resource. As you can see, that banner carries through for all stages for the students. But I wanted to show you um, our embedded guidance, our standardized guidance is, is done a little differently. And this was inspired by the Early Childhood Education or ECE team here in the Department of Education and Liberal Arts. Um, I definitely cannot take credit for this process, but it was an amazing process. Rather than having the full text in here, it links out to Adobe. And this is something that can be republished if something if a student's having issues with a particular assignment, um, we can add to um, the, the instructor tips that are here, we can add additional resources. This again, keep in mind, this is the standardized guidance. So this can be republished at any point in time, it links out from the course itself, we, we go through the the outcomes uh, for the week, as well as talking through how to um, work through the assignment and then instructor tips for each time. Um, the beauty of this, like I said, is it can be republished um, if, if students need additional guidance as we go through. And then um, we have, speaking of critical thinking, explicitly stated our program learning outcomes as part of the student process in week one. So our team built us a page for that. And to organize and engage students with less text, we have a tabbed format. So when they prepare for the, uh, the particular course activity, they start at the prepare tab and, and then it prompts, accessibility-wise prompts to move through, to reflect, take action, which is the actual um, component of the assignment instructions and then the guided response. And that carries through throughout um, the course. We brought in some um, workplace and real world relevancy into our poster introduction where they're examining in um, membership to professional organizations since this is a collaborative relationships course. I do want to show you the discussion forum because a little bit more media comes in in the discussion forum. Um, we have our interactive, which is um, part of that workplace and real world relevance where students are actually um, looking at taking on a scenario, a work-based scenario. And our Learning Mate team designed this for us. We're in, this, in this week, they're taking on the role of a family member in a collaborative team. And they read the scenario and then they type their response. This is self-graded. Um, self so they're looking at, um, it's not graded, let me rephrase, it's self-reflective. They look at what their response might, might include to compare their response to um, some prompts that we have listed here. 
and then um, remind them of our various learning outcomes and some best practices if they want to extend beyond. And then once they are complete with the interactive, it's tied into the assignment instructions. So tying it back in to taking action um, as a specific um, instructional point that's measurable of how, um, how that act interactive activity um, affected this particular discussion prompt. Um, again, building in critical thinking, we have different format options, so differentiated response options. Um, they can respond in a written format or a multimedia format with all the resources here. And I'm trying to think of what else I would, was wanting to showcase here. I want to make sure and give Lane some time. Um, let me pause there because I have not been following the chat. Are there any questions or um, anything anyone would particularly like to see? Uh, Trisha, anything that I'm missing that you know you'd like to um, highlight? <laughs> I think you got, I think all the questions have been um, answered. This course you can see at the top is ESE 634. It has not copied yet. It's not ready to go. So you won't be able to, to poke in and see it just yet. Um, but in um, it's scheduled to go live on December 13th. So that will be the, anything after that date will be the first section of the course. Um, do you mind showing what you've done with some of the pages related to discussions or assignments if there's anything you wanna note there? Can you clarify for me, Trisha, what you wanted? Um, anything you've done differently with the discussions or maybe even just showing what the landing page might look like? Here we go. Oh, oh sorry, was, I can go back to that one. No, that um, was perfect. Um, let, me, let me go to the final project, will that work? Awesome. Um, so here's the final project, and this is another one of those where we brought in a um, career relevant activity where they're designing a um, professional development experience. So um, they'll go through that interactive and take a role and um, reflect on their learning outcomes. Here's the take action. We added in scenarios um, to create this final assignment. And we've also incorporated it in folio um, into um, the submission for the final project. One thing I want to highlight here is this, this is what might be considered a text heavy assignment if the tabs at the top of the page were not included. So what was very deliberately done here was um, the tabs at the top were created to separate out the different things like prepare for the assignment, reflect, take action, here's options for formatting, and then finally submit the final project. Um, we, that's done to um, capitalize on, on the real estate of the, of the page for the students and not overwhelm them with text. So I want to um, give a special shout out to Jesse for taking advantage of that. Can I answer any other questions? Otherwise, I'll pass it over to Lane so we can see a different take on it. <laughs> So Avisha, you to um, request the tabs, you'd work in your kickoff meeting and, and re request to learning mate that that's something you'd want as part of your design if you're looking for a tab to design. Um, we have the accessible um, accessibility language at the end of reminding students when they're in the first tab to move to the next one and move to the next tab so that they have that prompt to move through the tabs. I hope that answers your question. And Jackie's asking about um, what can be accomplished on an Adobe page. Um, so the having that built into Adobe gives the opportunity to pull it out and it doesn't have to be um, edited within Canvas with a, 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 a CFF or a CRAF. If um, changes to the guidance need to happen, that's one of the pieces that's different. Um, and definitely the layout is different. Does that, I hope that answers the question. And actually, Jen Zauer, Amy Johnson, and the ECE team can answer those questions even better than I can. I'm, I'm still learning. 
And no, to, um, actually, I worked with an instructional designer in the past um, on a previous um, course revision. So it was the tabs were actually something that I have done in prior courses in the program and making them more consistent. As Trisha said, some of our instructions are a little text heavy. So it was one of those ways um, that we found helped a lot with students. And so I made that request this time to carry through the tabs. And to add to that, Newton, when you meet with your instructional designer, um, you know, reference back to ESC 634 um, or just say what recommendations do you have to eliminate the text heavy one page scrolling and and that's where um, you'll really be able to tap into their expertise in in learning design. I think I got them all but I can answer more questions in the chat lane i'm going to pass it over to you. Okay, thank you that's what an awesome course all right. Hello, I'm Lane Andrew, and I wanted to share with you some of the things that we've been doing in Math 205, Quantitative Reasoning for Everyday Life. It's a course that's been at UAGC for a few years, but we really wanted to reimagine it and um, update it. We began by uh, creating a whole new Constellation ebook on which the course is built. And we changed all the assignments and just really rethought the course. All right, so I wanted to tell you about the revision. Um, using the four foci that were introduced earlier, student engagement, critical thinking, a community of learners, and real world relevance. So when it comes to the first point, student engagement, um, the part of the course that really ties in with that is the learning labs. So each week, students would hopefully go in and read the chapter for the week in the ebook. And then after that, they would come down and complete these four learning labs. So the learning labs reinforce the reading and in a very low stakes environment, um, give the students a place to interact with the content, do some reading, answer some questions without it counting really for a grade, more just getting points for completing it. So let me show you one of those. So up here, this is one of the learning labs. So by definition, it's engaging students because it, the students point and click and move through. Um, they, they have to read, they have to answer some questions. When they do something, the system gives them something back, gives them instant feedback. And as they work through here, um, they not only read, but they answer some questions. They're getting some points. They're not just passively reading something, but they're actually, um, you know, completing something. All right, so when we think of the second bullet point, critical thinking, my mind immediately goes to the homework assignments and the review of the homework assignments. So each week, students are given 20 randomly selected problems, and some are fill in the blank, some are um, multiple choice, but they go through and they work these problems. So some of these problems they might already know how to do and so they can just answer them and move on if they're stuck they can come over here and watch a video converge 8.6495 times 10 to the fifth to a whole number when you multiply by 10 to the fifth notice two features since five. All right, so these are short, less than a minute videos, and they can, you know, assess how much of that video they need to, to watch, and they can watch it five times if they want. They can come back here, answer the questions. When they're all ready to, um, to move on, they can submit the homework. 
And then here's where some uh, critical thinking really comes in. So they, they get a score and they can go through and see which ones they got right, which ones they got wrong, and then they can see what the correct answer is. And then this points them to the point in the textbook where they can go back and do some more reading. It also gives them some specific to the problem type um, feedback, like what, what do you need to divide to get the answer? Okay, but here are the ones they get right. They can, they don't have to spend much time on the ones they get wrong. They're going to have to do some more digging. So they can, they can uh, figure out where they're lacking, what things they don't understand. They can do some more reading. They can, can really build up their knowledge and then um, they can retake it again and again and again until they're confident that they um, understand the chapter. All right, the third point here, community of learners, when I think of that and our uh, course, Math 205, I think of live learning. So within the course, students are required to do at least, well, they're required to attend at least one session of live learning. So they would click on this and it would take them to, you know, the instructions and some, some explanation of what live learning is. They come down here when this was all scheduled out, they, they would have, they would be able to see what upcoming live learning sessions were there, what times, what days, and they could just click on them and um, attend the Zoom session. All right, point four, when it comes to real world relevance, um, where we really tried to integrate this in the course was in the discussions, among other places. But um, if I click on discussion board one, just for an example, In each discussion board, we try to give students more than one option because we have students in this class from a variety of programs. Um, and we're not sure what might be relevant to one and might not be relevant to another. So uh, here's three options. The first one is on the US national debt. The second one is on is is uh, putting rice on a chessboard and seeing how fast it multiplies if you double it. And option three is uh, the sizes of viruses and bacteria and um, uh, things of that nature. And so here we've got, you know, national debt, sort of a political science civics application. Option two is more of a uh, sort of a practical um, rice and chessboard multiplication problem. And then option three, I guess, would be healthcare or uh, biology applications. So hopefully students can see in one of these options, they can pick one that seems relevant to them, and they can apply some of the, the concepts from week one. In week one, the, the concepts are big numbers and small numbers, and that's applicable in a lot of different places. All right, so this course is a, is sort of a testament to what uh, UAGC, what our Constellation team, what Learning Mate can do with the course um, in the areas of student engagement and critical thinking, community of learners, and real world relevance. And I'm really happy with it. I think we have really strong learning labs that will engage students and help them uh, uh, learn the content as they go. I think we have a good homework system that scaffolds their learning where they don't just complete a bunch of problems, but they, they enter an environment where they can certainly answer questions quickly if they know it, but if they need extra help, they can, you know, sort of exit out and watch some videos um, or they can uh, complete it and then review all their work. And, you know, if they're not happy with their score, they can go back to the drawing board and, and read some more, try some more problems. And then um, students are not alone. They, they have an opportunity each week to do live learning. They could even go to two sessions a week if they wanted, interact with an instructor, interact with other students. And then hopefully students will see this as a real world um, relevant course. 
um, not just in the discussion boards, but I think the, the content itself is, um, is consumer mathematics. It's um, a big and small numbers, as we saw, some statistical literacy. And also in chapter four, we try to tie in the content into uh, the, the people, the places, the cultures, the history, and how mathematics really, uh, you know, informed all those things. So, so mathematics is not just something in a book somewhere, but it's something that lives and breathes, and it's, it's, it's present in history, it's present in cultures, it's always been there in different places. And, and there's, you know, interesting characters that did mathematics, and interesting problems that were solved. So we're hoping to capture students' imaginations a little bit and um, and feel like at the end of the course that they learn something and they understand why, uh, why they're taking this class. All right, that was the course. Thank you for letting me do a little show and tell. Thank you so much, Lane and Jesse, for those amazing courses. I think they really align with the 404Sci very well, and I know students will be extremely excited to take them. We only have a couple minutes left, but I did want us to kind of talk about um, facilitating the courses. I know Amy can go into um, some best practices on how to facilitate a newly revised course. So let me... Well, I just want to say I wish my math classes had been like that. That would have been far more enjoyable than oh, what I remember enduring. Um, so in terms of facilitation, um, if you're a faculty member teaching a course that's been recently redeveloped, um, you'll really want to maximize that prep week. And as with any course, you'll want to review the course learning outcomes and the weekly learning outcomes. And you'll also want to review the new materials and learning activities to organize resources to help you provide constructive feedback um, to your students. And if you can go ahead and, and uh, advance the slide, please, Nikki. Um, and, and also, it'd be beneficial to take some time during prep week to think about how you can encourage the focal points set forth by Learning Mate. Um, in terms of student engagement and sparking that uh, via learning science, bring what you know about learning theory, cognitivism, behaviorism, cognitive load theory, or social learning theory, bring that with you to the classroom. And in terms of developing critical thinking, how can your announcements, your feedback, and your discussion participation encourage critical thinking skills and take it even a step further clearly from the two courses we've just seen uh, they've done a really excellent job of encouraging critical thinking are, are there ways that you can um, piggyback on some of those strategies and if you could please um, advance the slide um, next um, what are some strategies you can use to create a community of practice in your classroom we talked with uh, the team i'm on about you know can you make it feel as fun as a book club feels? You know, that's another community of practice. That's another, uh, you know, um, social learning group. So how could you do that in your classroom? And can you make content meaningful to students by demonstrating or explaining to them how it can be used in the workplace? For example, I was thinking about uh, when students are writing a research essay and they think, well, what am I ever going to use this for? And if you say to them, you know, it's really important to practice this sort of um, scholarly tone in your writing because you may be writing one day to a school board or to your city council. And if you come off sounding like a blog post or, or informal, people may not take you seriously. So this is why we practice this kind of formal scholarly tone um, in our writing, which, which may seem, you know, writing a research essay for someone who may ultimately become, say, a human resource generalist, it, it may not make the connection. Make those connections for students. How will these skills maybe give them a leg up on their competition, put them ahead of the competition, or lead them to a position with more responsibility or possibly even a promotion? Um, making those connections to students can really help them um, in terms of um, seeing the, the value and um, increasing engagement. Um, so I'll go ahead and I think Diana's next up. 
Yes, I am really quickly, because I know we only have a couple minutes left, going to just um, talk about really quick how to remember to remind you, which I'm sure many of you are already doing, to share your vision with all of your faculty. Um, I know that you guys have plans um, to, to already do that, but when you're, when you're updating associate faculty, consider these, consider these questions. What significant changes did you make? And how can you relate them to those four areas of focus that we talked about? So you, you know that you created those changes for a reason. You know, you went through this process with Learning Mate and you, were, you had very specific uh, intentions behind that. So make sure that the faculty who are teaching the course understand that too, so that they can you know, piggyback off of what you've already done and take that learning further. You know, um, do you have resources that you can share them uh, with them? To, you, to support students. So if you know that this, this is a concept that students struggle with and you, you're preparing to teach the class yourself maybe, and you're already thinking about, I'm gonna have these sources ready, these things to remind students about, share those with your, your faculty who are gonna be teaching this class with you. Um, you know, would a facilitation guide help? Is there some notes that you can share on, you know, in this week and this week, make sure that students understand this because it's going to be important for them to master this learning objective and this one and you know how everything kind of has that domino effect. So just have those things kind of in mind um, when you are updating your faculty on your new course revision so they can get excited along with you and they know where to really focus their time in their prep week. So we all know that um, they get that one week for prep and depending on how many changes you made, there may be um, lots for them to dig into. So make sure they have the time um, and the resources to set them up for success when they are going out there and teaching your awesome new courses. And um, just a quick plug, we have a survey we would like some of you to take um, and give us your feedback um, for the workshop series next year. So if you have um, ideas on things you would like us to cover, what you found most valuable, valuable, what you are implementing that you've already learned from us, we would love to hear that so that we make sure that we are tailoring this to your needs in the future. And I'm gonna drop that link in the chat right now, as soon as I find where I put it. Nikki, I'll hand it back over to you. Well, thank you all so much um, for attending our webinar. We are at time, um, but if anybody has any questions, um, please feel free to email any of us. Um, our emails are just our names at uagc.edu, um, and we're happy to, to go more in depth. Uh, thank you all so much.